Yeah, no, you just like made that sound like we were. Yeah. You know, uh, hopefully, we're different. as focused as we can be every single day that we go out there, come out here and make a left on Rosa Parks, and hopefully we get into the parking spots, get them down to the loading dock, um, check, you know, make sure they know where how to get in the locker room, and then just try to make sure it's a it's a normal practice. It's not going to be anything outrageous, um, but but we got to get some speed in tomorrow and. We're just going to do it there, and we're excited to be able to see our fans. I hope there's hope the weather holds down. I hope there's a bunch of people there. Yesterday, you said Des Fitzpatrick had to do a lot to get increased reps. Are there any small victories or, or small building blocks that you could pull for him? And, and yeah, I mean that's always you know I mean we have to I mean but you, I just was answering the question that that's a competitive room, and uh, you know you have to and everybody does you know we have to all earn the right to be here each and every day and, and earn and prove our value. To, to the football team, and uh, there there are always small victories along the way, and you know whether that's you know getting in there and blocking and, and being positive and, and blocking, and you know we didn't we didn't throw the ball much, you know I mean in the second half, so it wasn't like you know there were a lot of guys that we were targeting in the second half of that football game. You know we wanted to see see some of these backs run, and uh, you know I'm hopeful that that Des will continue to develop and continue to work and, and keep fighting and, and try to earn a spot and it's like everybody else. What are the big guys like that, Mike? Like, you know, when, when you make a comment like that, is there a little bit of calculation or, or is it? I, no, I was just, you know, if I, I really, we got to inspire them to do their job better. We don't have to, to motivate them. You know, this is, you know, pro football. So we're going to try to, to teach, to develop and inspire them to do their job better. And I know that we're doing that. We're, we're, we're teaching them. You know what's required of us. I think that he's got a lot of guys that are showing him uh, what's expected uh, of of our football team and the players and staff on our football team. You expect to take a look at Fulton. Bowen said you know, maybe at this stage you would start to tinker with nickel a little bit. Is Fulton an outside guy at this point, or you think you're going to look at him? Well, I mean, I think that we can, you know, have the ability to move him around. We we haven't, you know, what I mean, so. I'm not going to say that we won't, but you know, right now um, he's played you know predominantly on the inside. I know that we asked all those guys that that can handle it to to learn it and to know it, and um, you know so hopefully you know if if we're moving guys around and we get guys healthy that that you know, we could put take a look at Christian in there right now, you know going down to Tampa. I think we would you know like to to see him and evaluate him against. You know some of those guys that are that they have that that are very very good, and you know see how he can can play and compete against them on the outside. How's the new low block rule work if you're getting blocked? If I'm a DB coming at an offensive lineman and I try to get under him and hit him low, am I at yes. jeopardy in the 15? Yeah, offense? yeah. So, well, I think you know we we went to, we talked about you know big versus little you know out on the edge, and 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 I guess what we were hoping for was that guys as much like. You know the the kickoff. You know when you went down there and that you couldn't go low on a on a wedge and you can't go low on a on a off returner uh, that you can avoid. You know you have the ability to avoid. You, have the, you know we're, we're hoping that an offensive lineman that's trying to block a, a DB in space, you know, without being able to cut, is probably going to slow his speed down a little bit so that he doesn't just get slipped. And if there is a collision, it's it's because the the bigger player has slowed down. Uh, and if the bigger player is, is just going full speed and trying to run him over, my, my guess is that, that a corner in the National Football League could dip and, and slip or, you know, make a miss. So, you know, we'll, we're, we're going to work through it. I know that that was done, um, you know, for, for health and safety and, and starting to adopt those rules and, and making sure that, that we're teaching it properly and that, you know, one of those perimeter plays or those mobile blocks that, that everybody stand up. Well, Farley wasn't quite ready to – be in game action last week. Are you hoping to ramp him up a little bit this week in the joint practices and uh, maybe get him a little closer to being able to go? Yep. See where he is and see if we can keep progressing. See if we can see if we can keep adding stuff on to what he's done. And um, there hasn't been any setbacks. He's been out here. He's been doing you know, the reps that uh, the predetermined you know amount of work that we've asked him to do. Is it more a case of not ready physically after coming off the NFI list or not ready from the standpoint of still learning the, the playbook and all? Just not ready in all phases.
just not ready. You know what I mean? Again, he hasn't had as much practice as everybody else has. And um, there's been, you know, some really bright spots and he's a quick learner, he corrects things. And, you know, but for some of these young guys, you have to be out there practicing and, and getting everything. And then he's focused and locked in and he's doing everything that we ask him to do. It just, you know, we'll see where he's at um, after these practices and, and hopeful that, that his reps could, could increase from what they were, you know, here in, here in Nashville. Into a week where you've got you know, a couple of joint practices and then a game. How do you decide maybe who goes in the practices, who goes in the game? Maybe what's viewed as maybe the most important work then? I mean, I think anybody that's healthy is going to hopefully practice, or whoever you know is able to practice will practice, and then you know we'll make a decision on the game based on how much work those guys got in practice and who needs work and who we want to take a look at. But, you know, we got to practice tomorrow. We got to focus on that. And then we'll travel and then Todd and I will meet. And we'll see and we'll make a plan for Wednesday. And then we'll do the same thing on Thursday. No different than what we would do here. So it's going to be a great challenge. I'm excited. But I want to focus on tomorrow, these meetings this afternoon, and then tomorrow's uh, practice in the stadium. Having gone through the call it periods out here and then an actual game with, with Todd Downing, uh, how would you explain or categorize, you know, the, the play calling process that he's had? As far as like the relay, you know, to, to the quarterback, et cetera. I think we've gotten it in um, very efficiently and the communication and, you know, I've, I've heard the conversations on the sidelines with the coaches and the adjustments that we're trying to make and, you know, I, good. You know I mean? No different than, than anything else, you know. What, what fans expect from the practice at the stadium tomorrow night? I mean, hope everything that, that we talk about here in, in you know, St. Thomas is that, that we're finishing, you know, that we're able to stay on our feet, that we're playing fast, you know, be some team periods and, you know, all the stuff that we do here and just the efficiency and, and urgency in which we run practice, I think is important. Um, you know, that there's, that there's a good flow to practice and they'll see that, you know, I hope that our players recognize that the, the way we practice is very similar to the, to the games and that the situations that we cover in, in practice um, do in fact uh, come up in the game. Moving some of those DBs around a little bit earlier, would you like to get Elijah some snaps at, at safety as well as at Nickel? I'd like to get Elijah just snaps, so wherever they are. And then just to follow up, Coach Downing, uh, what are some of the things that you like that, that you've seen from him, you know, in this time? That well, I think he's well prepared. I think he's, I think he's intelligent. You know, I think he's got a good relationship with the quarterbacks. I, I've watched him and Keith work together. You know, Keith an, an integral. You know, Keith Carter is an integral part of our our run game and, and how we you know plan that and and how we design that. I, I felt like they've worked well together. Um, you know, I think anything that I've asked him to do that that he's relayed that message on to to the offense or he's carried that message over or to the coaching staff. You know, today was you know a different day for us. We kind of broke up individual, and I'd ask those coordinators to. To, to make it an emphasis that those drills were about conditioning and fundamentals. And that, you know, I, I felt like after those periods, those guys were, you know, going pretty good. You know, they were, they got out what I, what I asked them to get out of it. Mike, what have you seen out of him? Sergeant so far in camp to give him the look you gave him on Friday? And then how did you kind of rate how he played in the game? Well, Makai's, um, you know, he goes hard. You know, he, he, he went so hard the first day to a point of exhaustion. And, you know, he was cramping up and everything else. And so we, we lost him for a couple of days. And, you know, we'd ask him, like, we ask you to go hard, but you don't have to go, you know, that hard. You're the only running back that was, that was here. So um, he takes coaching. He runs hard. He hit the hole hard, you know, covered a kickoff and, um, you know, did well. And, you know, that's, that's kind of what I felt like he, he deserved the, the right to get carries just like all those other guys. Drafted guy, I mean, does it kind of take something like that to get the head coach's attention? Well, I mean, it takes running down on a kickoff and running over somebody and making a tackle on the 16-yard line. That's, that's a good place to start. You guys got no juice on a Sunday. See, guys, <laughs> good luck. Hey, Nick, Nick Trout, man. We're juicing up a little bit, huh? Let's have some energy when we're doing this thing. More juice than Brady, though, frankly. What's that? Well, ask a good question, and maybe I'll tell you something good. Maybe that neon hat might need a change, huh? We can all see you, Paul.
Taylor, uh, with what Derek has done the last couple of years, what the, you guys on the line have done to help him get there the last two years, what's the expectations of what might be achievable in a 17th game, 17 game season with Derek this year? Uh, my job's not to give predictions. You know, the last two years, three years, the success that Derek's had says a lot about him, says a lot about the progress of our offensive line. But at the end of the day, like this is 2021 now. Like things could go the exact opposite direction we want them to go. It's our job to make sure that when we're in practice, we take the beaches down there. Like what the? Hell? It's a joint practice, man. It's an absolute bloodbath down there. They were obviously here a couple of years ago. Yeah. You had some reps against JPP. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Yeah, JPP. The first day of practice a couple of years ago put an absolutely blistering move on me in one on ones. I think they posted it right after. I went one way, he went that way, and then he. I, I was caught in a damn blender for a second, but. No, those guys, I mean, they're, they're Super Bowl champions for a reason. They're an extremely talented team everywhere at every position. It's going to be a good time to go down there and engage where we're all at and what we need to work on and, and uh, rely on the things that these coaches have taught us and what we pride ourselves in. What do you see out of Dylan Raidens and his development? And as a veteran, do you notice when a rookie starts to pick things up, when the light starts to come on for them? Yeah, I think Dylan's done a good job of taking the coaching and Coming in here, it's hard. Like I think I said in my last press conference, it's hard to practice here. This is a hard place to come in and do what the, these coaches expect a lot of us when we step on the practice field. It's not, you know, this walkthrough type of thing. We we go, and especially an individual. And I know that's a bit of a shock for anyone, any any school they came from. And Dylan, um, the way he started and the way he's going now, he's made a lot of leaps. Um, I mean, he's had a better camp than I than I probably had my rookie year. And um, I think he's done a I think he's done a good job. We all got to grow and improve, and that goes for me, Roger, Ben, everybody, and, and Dylan's one of those guys too. I think, you know, he's he's done some good stuff, and he just got to continue to keep going. This is a, you know, it's hard to play in this league, but it's really hard to play a full season. And you get late, especially your rookie year, you get in that week 13, 14, those types of things. Uh, your body thinks, oh, I should be done now. You know, usually guys are getting ready for a bowl game or whatever, and you know that's. Um, It'll say a lot about him as being a pro and how developed he can be and taking care of his body, how that's going to go throughout the season. But I think uh, I think Dylan's done a good job. What's it like on padded days to uh, to wear the double knee braces? That's the banger you came out with, Paul, huh? The knee brace question. I'm not. A, I don't like knee braces. I mean, I, I think you know these John and Vrabel have us wear the knee braces because they want us to be safe, and you know we're going to do that. I mean, we they want us to be safe, and that's. Um, if that's what they want, that's what we're going to do. They're, they're our boss. And so, I mean, I'm not going to go out there in a game and play with a knee brace unless I have to. Um, but it is, it is definitely, um, you know, you don't want something to happen in practice that you could, you know, maybe handle with a knee brace. So I understand why they do that. It's, it's, it's definitely a good thing that they put us in that. But, you know, it's tough. Knee braces can be hard, especially when you're, you know, you don't wear them all the time. We wear them all the time in college. You don't really notice it, and you come here. And I remember my first practice, I'm wearing knee braces to the first practice, and Michael Ruse starts laughing at me. And just go say, hey, if it's gonna go, it's just gonna go. And so I think that was the last time I wore knee braces until I was man. Uh, it was mandatory for me. All of a that? Yeah, you know, I, I mean, it's all just an excuse, right? Like I could sit here and say it's awful and it's this, and but at the end of the day, it's you got to get out there, you got to block the guy. Jeff's very, uh, very athletic three technique and cutting him off and knee braces is a little tougher than without knee braces. But I mean, if you can do it in knee braces, you probably do it without them. Are you faster on Sunday? All of a sudden, when they're off. Well, I mean, uh, during the season, we'll have them. If we do go pads, it'll be on one specific day, and then you take them off. So, um, you know, you want to be your fastest on Sunday. Uh, Bud present offensive linemen. What have your conversations been like since, since you've been teammates with you know? Yeah, Bud's uh, he's extremely athletic, physical uh, outside linebacker. I think I talked about this in my last time when I was up here was when we were watching film with the Steelers before we had to postpone that game. Um, you notice that Bud plays plays through the whistle and follows the ball, and it plays extremely hard. He's got very violent hands, and um, he's going to be a, a great player for our team. The way he plays, he knows what Vrabel wants and these coaches want, and I think um, it's going to show. And I, I'm really excited for him to start integrating back into whenever he does or whatever he starts doing more. I'm excited to go against him. It's only going to make me better. Good yeah, to get about looking forward coordinator uh, this, this year. Um, what, what, what do you like about Todd? And also, I mean, is that a job that comes with some pretty high expectations given what this offense has done? I think regardless of what we did in the last few years, I think it's uh, there's a lot of, I mean, if you're an offense coordinator in the NFL, there's a lot of high expectations on you. Todd's been through that before. And um, one thing that I love about Todd is he, he's, you know, he's told us he's going to stick to what we are as an offense. He's not going to, you know, you've had guys go in either 
on this team franchise in the past or other franchises say, you know, this is the offense that I run. This is what we're going to do. And it's, you know, the guys that come in and see the skill set that we have and kind of tries to tailor to that. Um, it seems like he's really – that's what he wants to do. And um, so we are we have embraced Todd as our OC. Uh, miss R, obviously, because he's a good guy and we love him. Super happy for him to be the head coach of the Falcons. And um, – but, yeah, we love Todd. About looking forward to practice these days. Did you were you disappointed not to get a couple snaps in the first preseason game? Then? No, I was under, it was understandable. I mean, I went the whole last year without a preseason game, and you know these practices are hard. And you you practice here in Tennessee; those games are a little bit easier. You know, so uh, it'll be fun to go down to Tampa and, and practice against those guys at that, that level uh, in a practice situation, whether it's one on one, some team peers or whatever. That'll be fun, but. You know, the game, it's the preseason's awesome because you get to watch the guys that work so hard. And, you know, you're rooting for all your guys to make the team. And obviously, the way it works out is, you know, you get 95 guys or 93 guys in the team, and it's not going to be 93. So you hope every guy out there that is out there can either make this team or make another team, and you're rooting for them the whole entire time. How fans at training camp last year, how much are you looking forward to tomorrow, especially um, considering how much you love practice and, and you're a high energy player? Yeah, no, I, I love the fans being there, man. I, I think. Um, I like that we're getting back to normal a little bit. I love that. I love that the fans will be there, and I know there's a lot of excitement in this city around this team right now, and um, it'll be cool to go out there and show them we've been working hard and hopefully not let them down. Back to the joint practices, Taylor, what, what do you get personally out of them the most? How do they help you the most? I mean, look at the talent on, on um, in Tampa Bay. JPP uh, is yeah, he's an outstanding pass rusher. He's got a, a barrage of moves. Shaq, uh, Shaq Barrett has been... Um, Electric. Even when he was at Denver as a backup, he was a guy that could really rush the passer and does does a great job. They have a bunch of guys in the middle too that are that are very talented. Those linebackers, uh, Levante and Devin, are extremely fast. It'll give me, give me an opportunity to get up to the linebacker level and, and and see that speed. I mean, their defense. You know, there's a reason why they were Super Bowl champs, and I think we're lucky to go down there and go practice against them. Talking the other day about how he already feels like that chemistry with you is, is kind of back. Yeah, it's what, beautiful. Yeah, what, are, what your thoughts were on that, and, and when? how do you know that it's back? You know, I think he mentioned maybe like hitting guys at the mm -hmm. same time. That could, what, in your mind, what's... Yeah, I, uh, I saw his answer on that when he's talking about us hitting in combination blocks and hitting at the same time, not him hitting and me hitting or vice versa, uh, being on the same page of that. Um, Roger and I have our own language that we use, whether it's a pass play or a run play. Uh, whether I'm making a fake call or a real call, Roger knows what I'm doing. And those are the types of things he's talking about. Passing off games is, is a very difficult thing to do in the NFL, especially when you're not when you're on the man side. And, um, you know, Roger's an extremely athletic and strong individual, and he brings a lot of energy to practice, so it's great to practice with him. But, uh, you know, the more individual, the more reps we get together, the better we're going to be. And I think um, he and I are very excited to – Play a full season together finally, and it's, I've definitely not helped out with that the last two years. That's it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.